Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. A bucket, some rope, and oh yeah, don't forget those fence posts. They come in handy. <laughs> now this is an entertaining speech, and I'm going to tell all of you a story. This story goes back in time, long ago when I was in high school, and to a far away place that actually doesn't exist. Now, in case you're wondering how this happened, I don't know how I got roped into it, but I did. My friends James, Tyrell, and Chris were very avid Dungeons and Dragons players. I don't know if any of you have played Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a role-playing game. You basically create a character, and you become that character for a few hours of an evening, and you go on a great test, a great, you know, travel through the wilderness, through dungeons, and slay mighty beasts, and they told me this was a lot of fun, so they roped me into it, and I decided I'll give this a whirl, why not? Now, they're very experienced Dungeons and Dragons players, so not knowing what to do, at first I made a fool of myself, but we'll get around to the end, where you'll learn a very important lesson. Now, for those not familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, there are players, and then there's one person who is designated as the Dungeon Master. Now, the Dungeon Master sounds like a very official title, but basically they are the storyteller. They're there to lead you through the campaign step by step. They put the monsters in front of you, the challenges, the different mechanics of the game, if you will, and they tell the story. And they decide your fate in the end. As you play the game, you decide what you want to do, and you have to roll dice. And if you get a high enough roll on the dice, you succeed. Lower rolls, bad things happen to you. Very bad things. And when you have an experienced dungeon master, they happen in vivid detail, which I didn't know until the end, but we will get there. Now, as I stated at the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. I go into this and we go, and there's three main locations in this adventure, I'm told. Three locations, okay, this sounds good. My friend James, who was the dungeon master that evening, excellent storyteller, and he starts off by saying, we walk into a medieval village. Picture a windmill, picture mountains in the background, green grass, water well in the center of town, and shops lined up with people busy going about selling their wares and deciding what they're going to do with their day. So us three strapping adventurers, Actually, two strapping adventurers and my level one character, who had nothing, walk into town. I'm carrying their armor for them because they have spares. I don't have any. And they decide, all right, we're in town. This is where we have to go. We have to get set up for our adventure. Sean doesn't, uh, hasn't been here before. He doesn't have any gear. Here's some gold. Go to the shop. Get set up. Okay, I think. I go. Go to this shop. Hand a piece of paper. Look through what's in the shop. Bag of holding. Bag of holding, that sounds interesting. What does a bag of holding do? Well, basically it's a knapsack that you can put a million things you want to into it, magical, and it never gets full. This is excellent. It'll cost all your gold, though. I think it's worth it, I decide. I think it's worth it to have this bag that'll hold things. I get my bag of holding and I have no gold left. So I work myself around town appropriating items. And I make some good rolls, so I appropriate some very interesting things. I get the bucket and the rope out of the well. They won't mind. They won't miss that. I get some fence posts, because you can't forget the fence posts. And I get some lantern oil, and I've got a few branches and a few other things that they were laughing at this point. And I think I was mostly just trying to make a joke of it. Never know what you need. Always be prepared. So we move on to our second location for the day. Walking through this cave mouth into this deep, dreary dungeon, and water dripping off the ceiling. It's dark. A few of them luckily have torches. A torch would have been a good idea. Walking through this dungeon, a few bad guys pop out. Tyrell and Chris take them down before I even have to do anything, which is excellent because I don't have a weapon yet. So I pick a weapon off of one of these guys. I'm prepared. I've got a weapon now. I've got fence posts. This is great. And we're having fun. So you're hanging out with your friends. What can you do? Next thing we know, though, we come to this 20-foot chasm. And we're looking at it and looking at it. And I'm told later that there's an alternate route around it that we were supposed to take because it's an impossible to cross. You can't jump it no matter how good your roll is. Can't fly. We don't have any magicians in the party. We're going to have to take the alternate route. But I say to myself, wait, what about those fence posts? 
and some of that rope. And so I asked, if I tie together some of these fence posts and the rope, can I get across this chasm? And James goes, you're going to need a really high rope hole, but you can try, because you can try anything you like. So I tie together some fence posts and I make some rolls of the dice, and wouldn't you know it, we cross the chasm. The impossible to cross chasm has now been crossed. So we skip that entire part of the dungeon. Everyone's laughing, I'm having a good time. It's starting to become a good story that we can tell people. The guy who doesn't know anything about D&D got across this thing with one try. Excellent. So now we're moving through the dungeon. We're killing more things. I've got a little sword. I break the sword on a guy because I have no luck at all with rolls other than for silly things. So I decide I'm going to stand at the back and hand things out as people need them. They can go do all the fighting. So I'm basically a support person at this point. Make our way to the bottom of the dungeon. Lots of epic adventures. But we get to the last boss of the dungeon. Off in the back, the glittering, shiny treasure chest overflowing with gold coins, weapons, armor. I could use all these things. We need to get this guy dead. I don't even have a weapon anymore. I've got a little broken sword. But I believe in Tyrell and Chris. They're stout, epic adventurers. They can kill this thing and I can get the loot. This is a great idea. So Tyrell goes up there and he's an archer. Picture Lord of the Rings, archer, you know, big, magnificent armor, big bow, shoots at this ice creature, arrow hits it, <laughs> arrow explodes, doesn't do anything. Ice creature apparently is immune to arrows. Well, that's not good, Tyrell's out now, that's all he has, is arrows. No problem, Chris is still there. Chris, strapping, huge barbarian, <laughs> comes out, two-handed sword, goes up to that ice creature, Whew. nothing. Sword shh, bounces back off of the ice creature. Shower of icicles and little figments of snow. Ice creature looks over, laughs. I think James, who's controlling the ice creature, is having too much fun at this point, but that we will move forward. So next time thing I know it's my turn. And I look. I say it's an ice creature. Yes. Don't have any weapons. Okay, it's still your turn. You gotta do something. <laughs> Got this bucket. What are you gonna do with the bucket? I've got this lantern away. I've got a bucket, and I have rope, and I have some branches. I'm going to put all the branches and the lantern oil into the bucket. Okay, Sean, that sounds like an interesting thing to do. Are you going to run? No. I'm going to swing this bucket around my head. I'm going to throw the bucket at the ice creature. Tyrell, shoot it with a flaming arrow. Ice creature will be dead. James goes, just starts laughing. He's like, do you have any idea how many rolls you're going to have to make in a row to get that? Now, these aren't six-sided dice. These are 20-sided dice. You have 1 to 20. <clears throat> Basically, I had to roll 19 or 20 six times in a row for each one of these different actions. Putting the bucket together, swinging it around my head, throwing it over there, letting it out, and then Tyrell had to roll 19 or 20 to shoot him with a flaming arrow just at the right time. So we're rolling dice. 19, 19, 20, 20, 19. This is impossible. We're all laughing. We're rolling on the ground at this point. Tyrell grabs the dice, rolls it, 20. Shower of sparks, flaming oil, ice creature, screaming in agony, melting and melting, and it's gone. And there we are at the end of the dungeon. The dungeon that we weren't supposed to be able to beat. We have two guys and a level one guy. We've done it. We've built, beat the creature. We have the spoils. So what did I learn from this? One, never turn down an evening of fun with your friends. And two, never forget the fence posts. Mr. Tim Popsworth. <laughs> Absolutely.